Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth for evening prayer. It's six o'clock on Friday the 10th of June. I'm recording it and I'll put that up on my Dominic Vogel YouTube channel as an audio file. I'm uh, live streaming on the Blythe Church's Facebook page and the details are there and on our website. You may have to dig for them for the Zoom code for our Zoom meeting, so you may join me in that manner and or in person in the building, 8 and 6 every day. There's always something going on. Uh, there's a traditional communion at 8 on Sunday mornings and uh, said even song with hymns most Sunday evenings, though this Sunday we're at Cheddarson for choral even song. My colleague Ginny takes the reins on uh, Mondays as it's my rest day. We'll wait for the bells. The words are available at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, and one may find them in the book, um, Daily Prayer, Common Worship, towards the beginning, after prayer during the day. There are two sections of morning and evening prayer, ordinary time and the seasons. We are in the ordinary time bit, evening prayer on Friday. <clears throat> you may also download them as uh, apps for Apple or Android devices. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of entreaty. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm, which you'll find at the back of the book, is uh, appointed this evening, is number 145. If you're following uh, electronically, it'll be provided for you. If you're turning to the back, and you look up 145, that's our psalm. Um, We'll read, I'll read it straight through. You're welcome to read it all, listen to it all, or read the even-numbered verses as we make our way. We open and close it with the refrain. We don't use it during the psalm in our tradition locally. And uh, use the prayer that follows as we see fit. Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O Lord, my King, O God, o God my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you. And praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. 
The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to all his creatures. He's loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord. Your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who, dis- who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of the Justified turning back in our books to evening prayer, Friday, ordinary time. We'll read it as we did the psalm. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. <clears throat> our first reading, Second Chronicles 22, from 10 to the end of chapter 23. The Chronicles books are part of the history of the Hebrew Scripture, so after the law, so if you open at the beginning, you find Genesis, of course, and you scroll through, flick through, um, you'll find the two Samuels, the two Chronicles, the two Kings. I'm not quite sure in which order they appear, um, to be honest, but uh, Second Chronicles, you're looking for the second book of Chronicles, about there in the Bible, if you're following in a book. We're looking for the large number, 22, at the head of the paragraph, that's the chapter number, and small number in the text, verse 10, and then we go on and read through the whole of chapter 23. If you are following online, simply scroll back part, uh, beyond uh, before the canticle we read a moment ago, Second Chronicles 22, from 10. Now when Athaliah, Ahaziah's mother, saw that her son was dead, she set about to destroy all the royal family of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the king's daughter, took Joash, son of Ahiza, Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's children who were about to be killed. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Thus Jehoshabeth, daughter Jehoshabeth, daughter of King Jehoram and wife of the priest Jehoiada, because she was a sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah so that she did not kill him. He remained with them for six years, hidden in the house of God, while Athaliah reigned over the land. But in the seventh year Jehoiada took courage and entered a compact with the commander of the hundreds, Azariah son of Jeroboam, Jerohoam, sorry, Jeroham, Ishmael son of Jehohanan, Azariah, son of Obed, Marseah, son of Adiah, and Elishaphat, son of Zichri. They went about through Judah and gathered the Levites from all the towns of Judah and the heads of the families of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. Then the whole assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God. Jehoiada said to them, Here is the king's son, let him reign, as the Lord promised concerning the sons of David. This is what you are to do. 
One third of you priests and Levites who come on duty on the Sabbath shall be gatekeepers. One third shall be at the king's house and one third at the gate of the foundation. And all the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. Do not let anyone enter the house of the Lord except the priests and ministering Levites. They may enter for they are holy, but all the other people shall observe the instructions of the Lord. The Levites shall surround the king, each with his weapons in his hand, and whoever enters the house shall be killed. Stay with the king in his comings and goings. <clears throat> The Levites and all Judah did according to all that the priest Jehoiada commanded. Each brought his men who were to come on duty on the Sabbath with those who were to go off duty on the Sabbath. For the priest Jehoiada did not dismiss the divisions. The priest Jehoiada delivered to the captains the spears and the large and small shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. And he set all the people as a guard for the king, everyone with weapon in hand, from the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and the house. Then he brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, and gave him the covenant. They proclaimed him king, and Jehoiada and his sons anointed him, and they shouted, Long live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she went into the house of the Lord to the people, and when she looked, there was the king standing by his pillar at the entrance, and the captains and the trumpeters beside the king, and all the people of the land rejoicing, blowing trumpets, and the singers with their musical instruments leading in the celebration. Athaliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason, treason. Then the priest Jehoiada brought out the captains who were set over the army, saying to them, Bring her out between the ranks. Anyone who follows her is to be put to the sword. For the priest said, Do not put her to death in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her. She went into the entrance of the horse gate of the king's house, and there they put her to death. Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and all the people and the king. that They should be the Lord's people. Then all the people went to the house of Baal and tore it down. At his altars and his images they broke in pieces. They killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Jehoiada assigned the care of the house of the Lord to the Levitical priests whom David had organised to be in charge of the house of the Lord, to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and with singing according to the order of David. He stationed the gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord, so that no one should enter who was in any way unclean, and to the captains, the nobles, the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, marching through the upper gate to the king's house. They set the king on the royal throne, so all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet after Athaliah had been killed with the sword. <clears throat> so I'm just scrolling back to yesterday to have a quick squint at uh, how it was that uh, Athaliah was killed. So I don't know, Second Chronicles 20 was yesterday. So we've missed out a couple of chapters, um, during which this character Ahaziah dies and her son sets about, sets about killing everybody else. Um, similar to our medieval history or more modern political history, um, our current Prime Minister didn't actually put to death but uh, remove from office all those who disagreed with him. So traditionally we've had different positions and opinions held in our cabinet, but uh, now they all basically are sort of filtered to just agree with the Prime Minister. And that's kind of what this woman is doing, getting rid of anybody who might have a claim to the throne, but one is hidden. And then after seven years, this person is uh, brought out, just a seven-year-old child by the look of it took Joash son of Ahaziah stole him away we're not told actually how how old he is but uh, at any rate he's hidden and then uh, one of the priests of the temple suddenly takes courage in the seventh year and decides to establish him on the throne but a very good example of uh, how to be strategic he goes around and sorts out um, all the people he needs to be with him makes um, pacts assures himself of his military strength and uh, assesses the time and then takes the king out declares him king and uh, sets everything up such that um, this woman Athaliah is exposed and vulnerable and uh, if anyone stands with her, they're put to death, and she's put to death, and suddenly there is control 
of the, this priest has control of the temple and of the people with their presumably this puppet ruler and uh, this is presented to some extent as a um, restoration of true worship but uh, sadly this, this brutality that we find in the Hebrew scriptures is more of a challenge perhaps than an inspiration or um, example of good practice we read it and we're challenged how it is that this is how people can operate um, in God's name it seems to me but uh, I don't know that the ends justify the means these are questions that stories such as this present to us and uh, ask us questions of how faith groups and state should or shouldn't work together Jesus clearly in his life and work was very keen to demonstrate that God's power and authority was over and above that of the temple and of the Roman occupation, uh, no doubt, especially when they colluded to oppress God's people. Romans 3 from verse 1 is our second reading. Scroll on if you're following online, if you're following the Bible, turn to about halfway, two thirds of the way through. Um, you'll find the second covenant begins and uh, past the Gospels and Acts. The next book is Romans, an argument to Gentile background believers to stick with the faith. We're looking for large number three again, chapter three, small numbers in the text. As we said before, they are the verses. We're looking for one to 20. Romans three from verse one. Then what advantage has the Jew, Jew, or what is the value of circumcision much in every way? For in the first place, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What if some are unfaithful? Will their faithlessness nullify the faithfulness of God? By no means, although everyone is a liar, let God be proved true, as it is written, so that you may be justified in your works and prevail in your judging. But if our injustice serves to confirm the justice of God, what should we say? That God is unjust to inflict wrath on us? I speak in a human way. By no means, for then how could God judge the world? But if through my falsehood God's truthfulness abounds to his glory, why am I still being condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some people slander us by saying that we say, let us do evil that good may come? Their condemnation is deserved. What then? Are we any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin, as it is written. There is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who has understanding. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have come, become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness. No, there is not even one. Their throats open graves. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of vipers is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their paths, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. So this is written to, as I said, Gentile background believers, and it's holding up to them the the value of uh, their faith and uh, discussing that in terms of the value of the faith of the Jews, those of the circumcision. And uh, as the Jewish faith and the Christian faith developed and uh, took root in communities beyond Jerusalem, the previous uh, titles of Jew and Greek or Judean and uh, Greek didn't really hold and uh, so they then became known as those of the circumcision and uh, those of the uncircumcision. And so there's this discussion here. Is there any advantage of being circumcised? And uh, effectively, no is the short answer. But there is something about the fact that they're in a close relationship, so they have that greater responsibility. Um, they were Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. So what if some were unfaithful? Will that nullify the faithfulness of God? No. This follows on from a couple of days ago, at least, talking about um, us having our conscience and us living under um, God's direction and rule as Gentiles and Jews. And uh, he goes on in a slightly philosophical kind of balancing on a pinhead. If uh, God is gracious, then we could do wrong and that would demonstrate God's grace. Some people have accused the writer of saying such things and... Uh, his response is their condemnation is deserved. But he continues, there is actually no difference between Jew and Greek. Whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law and the whole world, that every mouth may be silenced, for no human being will be justified by, do, by doing deeds prescribed by the law. 
all that the law offers is an awareness of our wrongdoing and our shortcomings, whether we are of Jewish background or Gentile of the circumcision or not. We may have come from a church background, and that church background will not cover us if we decide to live according to our own um, choices and uh, addictions and appetites aside from God. God gives us the desires of our hearts. We may not come from a church background, or we may be entirely unchurched. And likewise, if we go our own way and uh, avoid God's direction and instruction, then our condemnation is deserved. But from either background, if we choose to explore the things of faith, endeavour to live and pray and serve amongst a Christian community, then God's blessings will be ours. So to the response really back in evening prayer on Friday in ordinary time. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The Song of Mary. You have scattered the proud in their conceit and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will be blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, Abraham and his children for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit and lifted up the lowly. Saviour, sacrifice, seal, one in three, three in one. We look back over the past day at all those things that have been good. Where we have felt energised, where we have felt peace, where we have been able to recreate, explore hobbies. Be creative, rest, enjoy the creativity of others. Enjoy the sun, the shape and the smell of roses as I have this afternoon, just uh, walking around the garden after doing other things. We thank you where, for those moments where we have used your gifts, skills and talents that you have planted in us to the benefit of your name and the communities we serve. We thank you for these moments of blessedness. We also recognise through the day that there have been moments of wrongdoing, of darkness, of isolation, of pain, of anxiety, lostness, exclusion, impotence. And so we come to you at the end of the day, that has been our lot, asking for your healing, your restoration and your provision. Release International invites us to pray for the 22 girls kidnapped in Jabok in Nigeria in July. We pray that they will be set free, along with the 100 girls kidnapped in 2014 who are believed to remain in captivity. We pray for the establishment of uh, the rule of law, peace and security in that part of the world, so people of all faiths and ethnicities may live secure lives uh, openly in their communities, turning up the Christian Aid Prayer Diary. Uh, it's still not been updated for June. I'm not sure whether it uh, is going to be. Just uh, seeing if I can get my browser to... Oh, there we go. Refresh. No, we're still in May. Um, scrolling through, there's a prayer here for Zimbabwe. We pray for Zimbabwe, the focus country for Christian aid, whatever that may mean. Being prioritised, presumably, for the time being. The Joint Public Issues Team pray for Ukraine. As we pray for Ukraine, we extend our prayers to all countries experiencing conflict or oppression. God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. We mourn every casualty of this conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful. Hear our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. May all our human failings be transformed by your wonderful grace and goodness. We ask this in the name of Christ, the author of peace and sustainer of creation. The Suffolk Diocese Prayer Diary for June has us pray today for uh, Exiting St Martin with Len Landwade and their lead clergy John and uh, their reader Philip. 
we pray for other um, permission to officiate house for duty if they have them clergy and the um, other readers if they are there permission to officiate <clears throat> their elders and their lay leadership in terms of their church wardens treasurers and secretaries in that group <clears throat> or in that parish and we pray that they'll be encouraged and enabled to know your protection and your provision as they uh, build their strength of their faith on worship in their parish churches we pray for our hospitals and hospices those being cared for by those institutions and also their staff and visitors may they be inspired and enabled and provided for um, through their respective charities and through our generosity as taxpayers and to finally thank you and pray for richard who is, by the looks of it, um, priest at Buanga Parish in Biharamulo Diocese. May he be inspired by his experience of your presence in scripture, tradition and reason. And we turn to our um, St Michael group, praying God's blessing on the people and businesses of Linstead Road, Cookley Street, Mary's Lane of Cookley, in Cookley. And in Heveringham Low Road, Clay Hill, Barrels Hill, Heveringham Road Church, Road, Hellsworth Road, Heveringham Long Road and the Street. And in Huntingfield, Brickkiln Lane, Barrels Hill, the Street, Laundry Lane, Bridge Street, Linstead Road, Cratfield Road. And in Walpole, Hellsworth Road, Bramfield Road, Peasonhall Hall Road, Cookley Street, Cookley Road, the Kink, Neve, Close, Church Hill. We pray for the businesses in these places, especially those involved with hospitality and agriculture, that they will thrive and prosper and so be able to contribute to the well-being of their owners, managers, and also the local economy. We pray for the people living these addresses, that they too will be blessed, thrive and prosper through your grace and mercy. And as they do, may they turn to you uh, in celebration and to their neighbours as uh, good companions. We pray too for those for whom life at the moment is tricky. And may they receive help offered, find that which they seek. And may they know your presence in their circumstances to be a light and a hope and a joy, granting them peace in the challenges that they face. We ask your blessing particularly on Alice, Martin, Lillian, Dennis and Kay, Graham and George, Emma, Anne, Sarah, Ron and Jean, Anna, Dennis and Sam, Anna, Lewis, Anthony, Gail, John, Nick, Peter and Liz. We pray that you will break through in your sovereign grace and bring healing, bring provision, bring uh, friendship, bring accommodation, whatever it is that we're looking for for each of these people. Control over aspects of their lives, perhaps that they ha- feel they have lost, May their weakness be your strength or your strength, their weakness. No, that's not the right way around. But uh, may you be their physician, their bank manager, um, their counsellor and guide. Finally, we thank you for all that's good in the lives of June, Dorothy, Pearl, Harold, Mary, Malcolm, Jennifer, Karen, Ruth, Alan and Marjorie. We remember those we've known and loved, loved and seen no longer, those who have served you faithfully here and all whose years mine falls at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn, the loss of a loved one or a change in life chances that you'll be for us, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. And for your Shasani, Kamala Manila Veshmaha, and Masmahal of Shahas never Kamilas, and Tamala Manila Kafesni Masnu Hashi and Sirik Messifli as Mada, Tamala Manila San Vishma Eric Valian as one of my use of Hosha Kazima, Tamala Tiani is the Mishu for Sinu of Hasanish Persona and Hosha Sirik, and for your son of the Mahal of Shasani, Kamani and Nehi, and Masmani Milosha as a family as a vanish, that my own also for me, she may say Eric, but yes, for no Shahasa had the addition of Sarah. The collect for Friday evening, ordinary time here. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death and lead us to the fullness of life through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.